Welcome, my friends, to another edition of the Heritage Wealth Planning YouTube channel. Today is going to be part three of our 50-part series on state-by-state -state taxes for retirees. And we're going to talk about the wonderful state of Arizona. Arizona is near and dear to my heart because it's where I got married, where I bought my first house, where I had my first child. Love Arizona. Just a wee bit too hot for me, even though it's a dry heat. And I always say, yeah, sticking your head in the oven is a dry heat, too, and that's still too hot. I got a good friend about up here, actually, who uh, moved from here. He's from here, met back there, moved to Arizona, has come back here now. And he always shows me the uh, weather app on, <laughs> on his phone about how it's raining in Georgia. And then he'll show how it's always sunny in Arizona. And so I just I chuckle. But we're going to talk about Arizona. Don't forget, Arizona, the Barry Goldwater State. So Arizona, a long time ago, was the uh, Libertarian Mecca, the Goldwater Institute from where Jeff Flake, uh, the uh, senator who's... <laughs> He something want to ride with Jeff because he was a big libertarian oriented kind of guy when he was running the Goldwater Institute. And so, you know, Arizona is a very interesting state uh, from a political uh, dynamics, you know, the old West, Wild West kind of community and whatnot. But it's, uh, it's changed. So let's take a look what the tax laws look like relative to retirees. Uh, Arizona has certainly a ton of retirees out there in Sun City, Sun City West. Um, we live in North Phoenix off of uh, Bell Road and 7th Street. And then we lived closer to downtown on Camelback. Uh, but the last time I've been out there, I mean, everything going out to Black Canyon City has just ex exploded in growth over by that USAA cam campus. Um, you know, obviously that's the Phoenix and the Metro Phoenix area is not all there is to Arizona. You got Flagstaff up in the north, beautiful Flagstaff with pine trees and snow because it's in the mountains. You got Tucson to the south. Uh, you know, a lot of Winkleman, you know, all these different places and whatnot. But uh, but primarily the bulk of the population lives right there in that Phoenix Bowl, that valley. Where that's why it's uh, so hot because it's such a valley there. But such a beautiful state. Um, let's see. I'm interested to see what their uh, their tax situation is like. So let's take a look. So we're going to look at Arizona and we're going to go first and foremost to Kiplinger's. And we're going to click on. Oh, look at that. So here's a state diagram of Arizona from Clip Kiplinger's and mixed is they're saying about Arizona. Isn't that interesting? Mixed. So let's take a look what uh, what old Kiplinger is saying about Arizona. That's that's yeah, that's interesting, especially uh, because they have a lot of retirees there. So I'm almost wondering if their uh, retirees get a lot of breaks, whereas the uh, the business folks don't or something like that in terms of making it mixed. We shall see. So so. All right, so Arizona, uh, mixed tax picture. The Grand Canyon State is a major retirement destination with plenty of sunshine and a low personal income tax that talks out, tops out at 4.5%. Uh, Social Security benefits are exempt, as is up to 2,500 of retirement income. All right, um, that's, that's not much. The shadow on this picture, stiff sales tax, which in many places are also levied on groceries. Well, there you go. Uh, 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 sales tax right here. State sales tax is 5.6%, and localities can add uh, as much as 5.3%, but the combined average is about eight and a quarter. Uh, so that, I mean, you spend a hundred bucks, your average sales tax is $8.25. That's not cheap. Many cities in Arizona levy a tax on food for home consumption. Phoenix and Mesa are notable exceptions. And Mesa is a, is a big, is actually a kind of bedroom community of Phoenix, but it's, it's huge. I think actually Mesa might even be the second largest city in Arizona, if I'm not mistaken. It was, it was right up there when I was out there. Uh, income tax low, 2.5% uh, on up to 20000 of taxable income for married filing jointly and up to uh, 10000 for all others. Well, that's not much. And then a uh, high is four and a half on more than 300,000 taxable income for married filing jointly. So effective tax rate for most people is about 3%, most filers. So, you know, again, if you're in the 12% tax bracket from the feds, you're going to have roughly 3% to the state of Arizona. Uh, benefits are not taxed with Social Security. We already talked about that. Uh, railroad retirement benefits are exempt. Up to 2,500 of military, civil service, and state and local government pensions are also exempt. Out-of-state government uh, pensions are fully taxed, and that does not shock me in the least. Uh, you have all these people moving from Wisconsin, Minnesota down there with their government pensions, New Jersey. Uh, those guys are being taxed accordingly because you know they weren't part of the state paying income tax system into the tax system while they were working. Uh, so that doesn't shock me in the least. It only makes sense. But if you retired from the state of Arizona, 
a portion of your uh, pensions will be exempt. So that's uh, that doesn't doesn't shock me. IRAs are taxed as ordinary income, uh, 401ks, whatnot, and other de defined contributions plans as well. They do tax private pensions. Never quite understood why private pensions are fully taxed and, uh, and public pensions are not. That seems to be a uh, not really fair, but uh, the idea used to be that if you work for the government, you weren't making as much money, and uh, that simply isn't the case anymore. In fact, where was I just reading? The cop from the Parkland shooting, um, he's making a pension of $8,700 a month. I mean, yeah, yeah, I get it. Please work, do a lot of risky stuff. I absolutely get that. $8,700 a month pension is uh, it's not sustainable, my friends. So that was uh, that was pretty amazing. And I know there are teachers out there making significant pensions too. Um, you can't tell me they get paid less than your average working stiff out there. I just, you know, deliver, delivering packages for UPS, for instance, that is something not true. Um, it's interesting. All right. So property taxes, the median property tax. I don't have my calculator. Dag Nebit. The median property tax on uh, uh, Arizona's median home, median home value is thirteen hundred on one hundred seventy six thousand. So just I don't have my calculator. What did I do? It. So just remember the median means 50 percent or above it, 50 percent or, lo or lower. So median home. Half the houses are over one hundred seventy six thousand. Half the houses are valued below one hundred seventy six thousand. And the, the property tax on that is about one hundred thirteen hundred bucks. What's that? About one half of one percent, roughly, maybe three quarters of one percent. Here's where the seniors. I was wondering about this because uh, Arizona has a significant retiree population. Single homeowners and renters sixty five and older who earn thirty seven hundred dollars or less, <laughs> and married couples who earn fifty five hundred dollars or less are eligible for a property tax credit. So again, if you're just on uh, social security, you're not going to get, uh, you're going to get a property tax credit. That's for sure. Um, but it doesn't say what the credit is. All right, let's keep reading. Homeowners who are at least seven years old have either resided in the primary residence for six years or have lived in the state for at least 10 and do not receive more than 10,000 of uh, taxable income per year can defer their property taxes. Defer. Um, Defer to when homeowners who are at least 65 years old have resided in the primary residence for at least two years and fall below certain income levels. Uh, one owner of a property must have total income of 35,000 or less. Multiple owners of a property must have income 44,000 less can apply to the assessor by September 1st to have the valuation of the properties frozen for three years. The freeze can be removed, renewed every third year. I mean, it's just sounds like the, uh, Make it too complicated, um, but okay. So I just want to go back to that. It says you can defer the taxes if you're a homeowner and you've resided in the state for a certain amount of time. I, that inherently makes sense to me, but defer is not avoiding. And then if you are a homeowner, at least 65,000 and basically less than 44,000 if you're married, filing jointly, 35,000 if you're single, you can have your taxes assessed. You're assessed, the valuation of your property is frozen, excuse me, for three years and then frozen again for every other, every third year after that, if, if they agreed to, if the assessor agrees to that. Um, but you're still paying property tax. So eh, that's, that's okay. That's a, eh, I can see where it's a mixed uh, income tax state. That's for sure. Or it's a tax state. Sales taxes due on vehicles rate depends on home address of buyer. Uh, they levy an annual tax based on car sticker price and age. The assessment is set at 60% of the MSRP. Reduced by 16 and a quarter for each year since the vehicle was first registered in the state. The rate is uh, $2.89 for new vehicles and $2.80 for used vehicles of each $100 assessed value. Wow. Um, is that the assessed? Is that the property? Is that just a sales tax? Yeah, I guess that's a sales tax. So, I mean, there <laughs> you get a $1,000 assessed vehicle. It's going to be a $21. A $10,000 assessed vehicle is going to be uh, $210. Um, for the example, a new vehicle that costs $25,000, the first year assessed value would be $15,000. And the, the value, the vehicle L tax, I'm not sure, vehicle tax would be $420. All right, that's not cheap, that's for sure. But do they do it every, an annual tax? Yeah, there you go. Huh. Um, so they're getting a sales tax, plus they're doing an annual tax. Is the assessment on the sales tax? So I think what they do is when you make that purchase, they get you, like right here, they get you 420 because they're going to assess it at 60% of the MSRP. 
um, but the new vehicle costs 25000 Is that the MSRP or is that the price that you paid for it? I don't know. Um, there's first year assessed value be 15,000. So I guess that's 60%. Okay. So they're saying that would be the MSRP, the 25,000. They're going to assess the vehicle for your property taxes at uh, 15,000. And they're going to charge you $420 on that. And then the next year is going to drop by 16.25% of this value here, or I guess it doesn't matter. This value here, which would drop this value here, if that makes any sense. And then it'd be probably another 350. That's a pretty significant annual uh, tax there for sure. Property tax on the vehicle. Uh, especially when you think about all the retirees out there on a fixed income. That that I can see that being a, a burden. No inheritance or estate tax. Okay, so let's uh that's interesting. So now let's go to the tax foundation. And let's go to Arizona. There we go. Um that's not uh, as favorable as I would have thought. Like I said, Arizona is not nearly the libertarian uh, state it once was. That's for sure. Um, a lot of people from California moving into Arizona, and I imagine they're kind of taking their tax politics with them. All right, so we talked about this. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, so top individual tax rate, 4.5%. State and local individual income tax collections per uh, individual income tax collections per capita, $551. So not much. I mean, they're giving them high ranks for uh, not collecting as much for state and local income taxes. Uh, state and local tax burden, 8.8%. So they're in the top eh, top third in terms of favorability for a taxpayer. Um, still 8.8% of, uh, of state and local tax burden. That's, you know, that's pretty significant. Uh, tax Freedom Days, April 15th. Remember, Alabama and Alaska we're April 9th, 8th and 9th, respectively. So uh, we're moving out now. Um, let's see. I guess that's it for that. So let's go to property taxes. Because that's, like I said before, that's typically can be a big one. Uh, property taxes paid as a percentage of owner-occupied housing is uh, ranked 38. So very low in terms of the tax consequence to you. Uh, that's that's good. That surprised me quite a bit just because the property that you own in Arizona uh, they're not hammering you for that. So that's good. You want to avoid property taxes, make, minimize them as much as you can, my friends. Property taxes is something you can't avoid. Um, and you go into a state with high property taxes, i.e. New Jersey, New Hampshire, Texas, um, California, whatnot. That, that's just a huge burden that you can't escape from without question. But you can do stuff on your income tax for sure. You can finagle uh, to the best of your ability while you're alive uh, in terms of taking advantage of your standard deductions, taking advantage of all these various things. Property tax, you can't. You get what you pay and you, you pay what you pay and you're going to pay it. Uh, state and local property taxes per capita. It gets a little bit more up there, um, ranked 34 out of 50. So they're not quite the best, but uh, still in the top, you know, basically top third. And let's just look at sales tax. Uh, 5.6, so smack dab right in the middle of the state by state in terms of sales tax. Average local sales tax, 5.2.73. So that means an average and this is where they get you. When you combine the state and the average, you're getting 8.33, which means you're on the highest, uh, you know, number 11. And the higher, the lower rank you are, um, it's not like college football. We don't want you ranked number one, okay? We want you ranked number 50, and that's uh, that's getting up there. So relatively low property or significantly low property taxes, low income tax as well. But again, they're going to get you someplace, and here they get you on their sales tax. Um, you don't smoke because they're going to tax you $2 per pack. Gasoline tax are only taxing 19 cents per gallon, so they're a low rank, which in this case, again, is a good ranking. And uh, state and local general sales tax per capita, about 1300 bucks on average. So um, so Arizona, you know, there's some, uh, there's some tax issues without question when it comes to sales tax, but you still have the income tax to contend with, still have property tax. So you got sales, income, and property tax. The issue that you got to watch out for, and this is why I like the states that have no sales tax, no income tax, or whatever, because it's hard to, like Washington State, uh, Bill Gates' dad was a very big vocal advocate for inc incorporating an income tax in Washington State. And once they get, look at Connecticut, once they get it passed and approved, it never stays as low as it once was. Never. Connecticut is a shining example of that. And it's driving people out of the state, driving business out of the state. So as long as you know, hey, my tax burden is going to be on this, retire, uh, not retirement, on uh, property taxes, or my tax burden is going to be on high sales taxes, you can focus on that quite a bit and keep your eyes, you know, uh, peeled, your ears peeled, say, huh, what are they trying to do with that one tax area? When they try to change it from nothing to something, 
always under the auspices of we're only going to get the rich. Well, you got enough experience now to know that it never works out like that. They always get the middle class and, uh, and eventually the poor. And so what I like about just having one tax like Texas, I think even Bush was proposing George W. Bush when he beat Ann Richards for the governorship in like the mid 90s of maybe incorporating an income tax to reduce this, the property tax. Thankfully, it didn't pass. Um, but I think he, he was even being uh, lobbied to do that. And the problem is once they do it, it never goes away. So Arizona, you got those three things. So you can say, oh, we're only raising the sales tax by one tenth of one percent. Oh, we're only raising the gas tax. Oh, we're only raising the property taxes. Oh, we're only raising the income tax. They can do that. And so it sounds like not much for that one area, but in in the entirety, the totality of it all, it can be very burdensome. So let's see what uh, smart asset. We're going to click on. uh, here and again uh, they're moderately tax friendly so let's click on arizona for smartasset.com and again i'll put all the links in the show notes arizona does not tax social security retirement benefits um however these other types of income like ira 401k are taxed by the state as we already discussed uh property taxes are relatively low but sales taxes are relatively high and so what we're going to do is we're going to go to our uh, uh twenty-five thousand for social security income we're going to go to our 25000 in IRA distribution income. We're married, born in 1953, and we're going to say, what is our tax there? And they're saying nothing. Oh, 261, excuse me, $261 of state taxes, and that's income tax for Arizona. So that's uh, $50,000 of gross income, my friends. Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head how much that would be subject to taxation. None. So basically it'd be 25000 plus uh, twelve thousand five. I don't have my calculator. You're gonna have so. Tw- so what we do is we take this amount right here. We add it to half of this amount right there. Twelve thousand five hundred plus twenty five thousand. That's gonna be thirty seven thousand five hundred. Subtract out thirty four thousand. That's thirty five hundred dollars. Will be your taxable income. Uh, and then you got it would be your. And then you have then you have uh, twenty six thousand dollars of uh. Of deduction, so there is no tax federal t- tax on this scenario right here, because your provisional income is thirty five hundred bucks. Your standard deduction in this case is twenty six thousand, so you have well more than enough standard deduction to offset any kind of provisional income. I know that's kind of confusing, but I just had to kind of figure that in my head. So you have no federal tax burden whatsoever. You do have two hundred sixty one dollars of state tax because of this right here, and that's not too shabby. Gross income fifty thousand bucks. You're only paying two hundred sixty one and total taxes off that income. That, that's uh, that's pretty favorable. So Arizona has some problems for sure, but uh, generally a favorable tax environment without question. Um, I wonder what the electricity cost is there. I mean, you can, I just talked to a guy today. He lives in San Diego. He's now throwing some solar photovoltaic panels up on his roof. And again, if, if you follow my channel, you know I have my skepticism of a PV panels, photovoltaic. Uh, but if you live in a sunny place like Arizona, man, why not? In fact, he's throwing his cost him 40000 bucks, but he's getting a third of that, 25, 25% of that just uh, right off as a tax credit. Uh, so he says. I mean, I, I, we have to wait and see, but that's what he thinks. So 30000 bucks, you know, he'll be free of any electricity bill in probably four or five years. I'm not going to argue with that. Um, you know, obviously, he's still going to have to pay for other <laughs> sources of fossil fuels. But generally speaking, that's not a bad thing, especially in San Diego, especially in Arizona. where They got the abundant sun, the abundant sun right there. Now, you just got to make sure, like I was telling him, if you're going the PV route, the photovoltaic, you got to have the big battery capabilities. You got to have the inverters and all that. This is what a professional can do for you. But remember, you're on your what's called grid tied. And if you're grid tied, that simply means when the grid goes down, you cannot run your PV panels. They, they make you shut them off so they don't electrocute a lineman who's out there trying to fix the wires. So you got to get a transfer switch, some kind of transfer switch. They have these technologies now where you can be tied to the grid to sell back your excess electricity. If then the grid goes down, you can switch it off. So you're not endangering alignment. Now, I'm not sure how much that costs. The technology is pretty new. Uh, but, man, if you're getting the photovoltaic panels in Arizona, you definitely got to, or California, or any of the sunshine states, you got to talk to them about getting that transfer switch that they have. So you can go from t- grid tied to off grid with just literally a flick of a switch. It's I'm telling you right now, it's wonderful. Just real quick, along those lines of PV panels, remember, you do have batteries down there. So even if you're off grid, Hopefully your batteries have been charged by your PV or your photovoltaic. 
that's what's going on. The sun is shining. You can, your panels are gathering the sun, to converting it to electricity. It's called photovoltaic. And electricity is going, hopefully, to charge your batteries. So if you're just putting that electricity back to the grid, you're not having any battery juice there. And what you want is you want your batteries to be charged. So that way, when the grid, if you are grid tied and the grid goes down, you can just use your batteries as a battery backup power. And lots of tutorials on YouTube there. I won't get into it here. One of these days, we're trying to interview a couple of guys. I did interview uh, Sean Mills on that on a podcast. But just remember, if you're going to Arizona and you're considering PV panels, photovoltaic, I, I highly recommend you do. But just remember, there are limits. You're not going to be off grid just because you have some PV panels on your roof. It's just not going to happen. But anyway, hope this helps. Arizona, again, moderately tax friendly. Uh, too hot for me. But if you're thinking about moving down there, yeah, you, you probably be in better shape than if you're uh, in New Jersey. That's for sure. So we'll see you next time on the Heritage Wealth Planning YouTube channel. Don't forget, thumbs up, my friends. Thumbs up. Give me two thumbs up. I actually don't think you can, but thumbs up. Always help with the YouTube. YouTube says, ah, that guy's, people like that guy for some reason. We're going to give him more promotion, which gets more people on the channel. So thumbs up, subscribe, comments, of course, and then don't forget to hit the notification bell to be updated for future con content. Look forward to seeing you next time on the Heritage Wealth Planning YouTube channel. Thanks, guys.